My name is Tony Reisinger. I'm the County Extension Agent for Coastal and Marine Resources with Cameron County and I work for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension and Texas Sea Grant at Texas A&M University and Cameron County. <laughs> so <clears throat> what can you tell us about the red tide levels right now? Uh, red tide levels are uh, high on two beach sites that we tested today. They're uh, more than 1,000 cells per milliliter. Our, um, the aerosol effects that we're experiencing are, I guess, mild to moderate. And in the bay, we have uh, cell counts that are, that are lower than uh, offshore on the beaches. And uh, why is that? Why is it that the red tide is more prevalent uh, over on the Gulf side than it is in the bay? Well, because it hit the Gulf first, and uh, it's going to take it a while to uh, get into the uh, Laguna Madre. If it, uh, if it will even increase there, we just, we really don't know. Right. We had uh, moderate level on the west side of the bay, but of course, of course that was uh, exacerbated by the wind blowing on shore on the west side of the bay. So it would blow those cells into there, and that's where, where I sampled this afternoon. And what can you tell us about the actual algae? Well, it's a, called an unarmored dinoflagellate. It has two flagella, uh, whip-like tails. One wraps around it, and the other one sticks out the rear end of it, and it can propel itself through the water and spin at the same time. And I think I've said it before, but it looks like something out of Star Wars when it's swimming. And under a microscope, they look pink to me, but uh, they give a a red coloration, a green to red coloration to the water when they're in very high levels. Low levels you, or uh, even close to high, you can't really detect the uh, change in color toward red. Um, what advice do you have for folks out there who might be trying to go to the beach this weekend or trying to come out to the island? If you go to the beach, uh, if you can wear a dust mask, dust mask uh, that helps the helps to filter out the aerosol the aerosol is basically uh, water droplets with some of the brevitoxin which is from the red tide and it's a neurotoxin and you're breathing and it irritates our uh, respiratory system so if you wear a dust mask the uh, particles get get accumulated on the outside of the mask and you don't take it into your respiratory system so it helps reduce any effects that you have. Would you recommend that people stay out of the water for the duration of the uh, bloom? Not really, no. I, I'd go swimming in it. Uh, it's not that that high a levels to even worry about it. Uh, at uh, extremely high levels, there have been skin rashes reported uh, in Florida, but uh, we haven't seen that here that I'm aware of. Uh, were you here for the uh, bloom in 2011? Yes, I was. I was here for the bloom in 1986 also. <laughs> and every bloom in between. Does this uh, current bloom have any similarities or differences from the, uh, from the event in 2011? I'd say it's fairly similar. I think we had probably uh, a stronger aerosol during uh, Sandcastle days last time. Um, it remains to be seen whether we're going to have increasing levels of aerosol or it's going to decrease, decrease because you can't really predict what the red tide is going to do. I mean, and there's like five, six people all clicking away at once. Wrong with this one's focused. 